Lack of affordable housing is the biggest social justice crisis in this country, according to the Planning Minister Nick Bowles. On Newsnight tonight, he reveals a new policy to encourage more house building, with what he jokes are bribes or Bowles bungs, cash for local communities who agree to new housing in their area. You could build a new playground for local kids. You can do whatever you like with that money. Well, I, I wanted to call it the Bowles Bung. Um. <laughs> we'll debate the idea and ask whether anything else might solve the housing crisis. If the community, town or village where you live is prepared to accept new housing developments, community groups will be given hard cash, perhaps hundreds of thousands of pounds. The idea is being implemented right now by the planning minister, Nick Bowles, who caused a rout on Newsnight last month by explaining why greenfield sites would need to be built on if Britain is going to meet the demand for housing. Tonight, Mr Bowles goes even further. He reveals to us his latest plan to use an existing levy or tax on house builders to give local communities some hard cash as a big incentive to say yes to development. We'll debate the wisdom of all this in a moment. First, here's our political editor, Allegra Stratton. Meadows and moors, valleys and viaducts. But we're on a journey among it all to find the great bricks of Great Britain. If the doomsday book itemised every piece of development in the country 900 years ago, where have we gone on to build? Newsnight is back on the road with the planning minister. Last month on this programme, he said only 9% of this land was developed. He was accused of making his sums up on the back of a fag packet. This then is the fag packet, a more modest, modern doomsday book on the walls of the minister's office in Whitehall. So there's been quite a row about how much of England is actually developed. Um, and you know, some campaigners have said, oh, it's 15%, you know, it's 25% that is affected by urban development and in you some said. way. Um, and I said it, it's 8.9%. The idea that somehow there's nowhere to build in the southeast is just not true, as this map, I think, demonstrates. You know, everywhere needs housing for... You know, what, remember, in the deep countryside, which is Cumbria, where we're going, is, is, is a good example, you know, people still want their kids to be able to live in the village that they grew up in. And if you don't build any houses, they can't, because, you know, holidaymakers buy the houses yeah at stratospheric prices. Destination one. We're heading to what the minister's maps suggested are yawning voids. The coordinates that test Nick Bowles' assertion that we have so many green and pleasant fields, some of them can be offered up. No, this is bruff. On its high street that Leslie lives with her four children in a rented home. She and her husband are professional carers for their neighbours in Bruff. Priced out of the market, Leslie is on Nick Bowles' conscience. But just what can he do to help her? A short drive through forbidding foggy moors to Crosby Ravensworth, where the minister tells her just what he's going to do. Hi. Nice <laughs> to see you. Well, good morning, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. We're in the Upper Eden Valley, nestled near the Cumbrian Lakes and Yorkshire National Park, and on the frontier of planning policy. Newsnight is here because it's the first in the country to put the views of its community into planning, and it will hold a vote on the outcome. Nick Bowles chose here to make an exclusive announcement. And what we've decided is that for those areas that have a neighbourhood plan and get it through the referendum, then 25%, a quarter of the revenues from the community infrastructure levy will go to the neighbourhood to spend on what the hell you like. That money will come to you if you build new houses. Does anybody feel that they want to respond to the announcement that Nick's made, which is... The, the bribe. Yeah. The, well, I, I wanted to call it the bowls bung. Um. <laughs> this is a new pot of money that the council might once have thought 100% theirs to spend. What do they make of it? The days when we're going to sit back and get um, allocations for anything, um, you know, really, have gone. 
and you, more you are prepared to accept 25% of your crop dwindling? I think the important point to make is this is a new revenue stream. Yes. So this yeah. isn't money that the district council yeah. is already getting, yeah. of which we're taking away 25%. This is a new tax that is bringing in new revenues, and we're saying you're going to get 75%, yeah. and 25% will go to the neighbourhoods if they have a neighbourhood plan. Yeah. Well, what it does so are those priced out reassured? Yeah. Who deems what affordability is in affordable housing? My husband and I work as carers in the community and we still can't reach, you know, like getting a deposit together for the mortgage, paying the monthly rent with four children, you know, where, where do we stand at the end of the day and what assurances do we have? that it will be affordable for us. Your situation is, is absolutely typical, I'm afraid. And it's, I mean, it's a huge national crisis. I think, uh, for my money, I think it's the biggest social justice crisis we have. It's bigger than bad schools, though we have plenty of bad schools, and it's bigger than people without jobs, though we have lots of people who are desperate for jobs. After digesting Nick Bowles' exclusive announcement, people in that meeting would later email this programme. They would express concerns that since his new funds will not all flow to the council, councils might be more resistant to neighbourhood planning. Because of this, they suggested, it just wouldn't work. The minister, though, remained adamant it would help people like Leslie. He took her to what he thought was an affordable home. With the work we do, it, it, it varies, so it needs to be something that I know at least my husband will earn within that month, but rents at the moment, we're paying what we could pay on a mortgage in rents, but it's finding the deposit and, and, and going through that, everything. Um, how much is that a month that you would think was doable? Mm, about five to six hundred pounds. It's very, very hard that the, this is going to take a very long time to change. The situation we have with the housing market in England is, is you know, 40 years in the making. How does that strike you? I mean, you're saying we're many years away from your situation being made easier. Yeah, but then at the end of the day, if it doesn't help me, it will help my children. Over at the Dales, to a cafe not far away, where Labour has a different take. Housing starts are down 9% on last year, so the point I'm making really is that the government's strategy to deliver more housing isn't working anywhere. So we want them to really look at how they put more delivery mechanisms into the system so that all areas that, because absolutely every area needs more housing and needs more affordable housing. Was the north of England where empty houses exist that just aren't cheap enough for Leslie. In the south there are different pressures and that's why Nick Bowles said that in order to unblock the logjam you had to open up other possible options, go for greenfields. So to Harlow and one such greenfield. It's been built on and we brought one of the minister's fiercest critics to it. Is the lack of housing because too little land is available or is it another reason? You, you think the problem is land. If you release more land, the house builders will build. I think you need to look more closely at how the housing market works. And, and actually the house builders in this country have got a relatively low output, high margin model, and they will build the houses that they think they can sell. The demand is there. The demand, you know, unquestionably the demand for housing is there because prices have gone up stratospherically. But why are people not building if, if it's somehow so easy in your... What was stopping them building? I don't think it was a lack of land. I don't think well, it was a lack of to come up with an housing finance. You've got to come up with well, an alternative explanation. No, I'm not, I'm not the government. Your government and the last government are in denial about is that when we built enough houses in this country, the state built a lot of them. Throughout the 1970s, the state built over 100,000 houses a year. Uh, private sector house building since the war has stayed pretty steady. It's the, the, the real loss has been in, in public um, house building, and that's been cut even more in recent years. This is what it looks like after building on green fields, but then there's what it looks like before. Down the road, here, the bulldozers are poised to roll into this more contentious Greenfield plan. Surely, if the government's going to offer you money, there must be something you can spend it on. Well, you can always spend money, but is it going to be use a useful project for the area? I don't know. I'll be perfectly honest. There's nothing I could think of that that sort of money would satisfy in the area. If you were talking about millions, maybe. Couldn't you, you as a community, do something with well, 100,000? Of course you can do something with it, but it still doesn't address the, the, the first, first problem that we looked at, which was... This, this development defies all of the, the original plans for Harlow, which was that they don't overlook various areas. 
that the, the road system is capable of carrying it, etc, etc. Just before Christmas, the think tank that Nick Bowles used to run said that this government's policies mean it's currently on course to build nearly 300,000 fewer new homes than the plans of the previous government, presiding over the lowest rate of house building since the 1920s. Nick Bowles needs his bribes and his bungs to work. Allegra Stratton. Well, the planning minister, Nick Bowles, is here, along with three very interested parties, Roberta Blackman-Woods, the Labour shadow minister, Simon Jenkins, who's chairman of the National Trust and a Guardian columnist, and John Stewart of the Home Builders Federation. Uh, Simon, do you agree that something must be done and that this might be the right something? Well, something must always be done. <laughs> what do you mean by something must be done? Well, something um, must be done to address a house build, housing shortage. There's, there's always a housing shortage, too. But there's plenty of land to build houses on. Uh, there's more derelict land in this country, there's a lot of post-industrialization than ever in English history. It, it is not, that's not the issue. Uh, building on a few meadows outside Harlow is not going to cure the housing crisis. Um, th there are plenty of empty buildings, there's plenty of sites with planning permission existing which haven't been used yet. Um, you can juggle figures, two million or so houses could be built right now on land available for them. The issue is how you treat planning. And I just think selling planning applications, um, selling planning permissions in effect through bribes, it's just not the way to plan this country. You should, you should decide to build where it's appropriate to build. It might well be on greenfield sites in places. Um, but the, the issue has to, has to be, the issue is planning. Do you plan where the appropriate development should take place, protecting beautiful areas, protecting country areas which are you're going fast? Or do you simply say, let's let rip, let money determine it, and let's bribe anyone we can to build some houses? Uh, that's not the way to approach planning. The problem is planning, the problem is not uh, what we just heard, and that you, you're bribe actually you're bribing people with their own money because it is public money at the end. Well, I mean, I'm afraid the trouble is, is that, firstly, Simon started with something that just isn't true. Um, the CPRE, and I don't agree with their figure, but even they only say that there's enough brownfield land, former you know, developed land, for one and a quarter million, and they agree that only 460,000 could be built in the areas where we need most of the housing, which is London, the South East and the South West. There are only 259,000 homes, empty homes, that have been empty for longer than six months. <coughs> so this idea that there's somehow land out there that we could immediately put two million houses on to solve the problem is, is well, frankly let, not true. Let, and, come and back and, let, let him come back on it. And also this question of, uh, you know, there is a degree of nimbyism. We all like our, our local area to, to, to look good and we're quite <coughs> conservative with the small isn't saying here's some cash quite a good way to encourage people to have a stake in well, what uh, is built uh, in their area uh, possibly and in fact, I have to say firstly it makes housing more expensive I mean 106 agreements which are in place already um, which is the way in which you, you tax developers to have to provide um, uh, to provide roads schools and so on um, th that's in place already it, we're making housing very expensive in this country by all these fancy schemes no, that's also not true because economically if, if Simon you spent a little bit of time looking at economic theory what he'd realize is that the community infrastructure level or the 106 agreement simply drives down the price that the developer pays the landowner for the land. Remember, the landowner's best alternative use for this land is usually agriculture. Agricultural land prices are what? Roughly £10,000 an acre. Let, let Development me, let land prices in, yeah. are £2 million. Pounds let me bring in John Stewart a bit on this because, I mean, is, from where you sit, is the problem uh, a planning problem? planning question? Is it that people don't like new developments in their areas, don't like what's being planned? Or is it, frankly, that we're all broke and we can't afford to buy new housing anyway? I think in the short term it's a question of, on the demand side, it's a question of mortgages. Since 2007 we've seen a horrendous crisis in the economy and in the mortgage market. But if we go back 20 years, over the last 20 years, it's, it's largely a supply problem. The planning system in this country controls the supply of land. You have to have a planning permission enabled to, to build legally. So it controls the supply of land. But uh, can I pick up on this point about a bribe or a bung? I'm, I'm sorry, Minister, but I, I find the term very unfortunate as a use. The point well, about... this term. I know. <laughs> it was meant to be a joke. No, no, no. no, 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 no We'd like to have jokes. <laughs> but the point about the community infrastructure levy, which is where this money is mm. coming from, it is a, an infrastructure levy. It's a levy on development, on land value, to pay for the infrastructure that we required to facilitate development. Now, that's... Mm. only proper and right. Whether it can be paid for by the land is, is another question, but it, it's only right that that should be the case. Mm. Um, if some of that is taken off and given to local communities, as long as it's spent on infrastructure, mm. that's fine. It's not a bung or a bribe. Mm. No one's getting cash in their pocket. Exactly. It's going to fund infrastructure. They're going to put a roof on the village hall. They're going to build a new primary school. They're going to do something to the local park. You know, do we not right. want to well, see these things happen? Are you, are you in any way persuaded by this? Because, I mean, you're in favour of localism. You're in favour of local people having a say. Presumably you're in favour of 
cash going to all those wonderful things. I mean, what, what's wrong with the idea? Well, we're pleased that the government has taken the community infrastructure levy forward. It was something we legislated for, and we are quite happy that local communities benefit from it. But it is simply not enough. On its own, it's not going to deliver enough affordable houses or houses across but the country. Just, just, but just, but did you, just sorry, we'll come on to what, what more should be done, but are you saying then that this idea is at least worth a look? You think it might work? Well, we think it's worth having at the edges but it's not going to deliver the amount of housing that we need. I mean, the government, um, you know, the minister is now saying he recognises that there's a huge crisis in housing. Well, you know, the government have got to upscale their efforts and we really want them to be looking at issues like, you know, bring some passion and vision back into planning. Stop saying that planning is just an obstacle all the time. We can use planning to deliver growth and we can use planning to develop new garden cities, urban extensions. We but can using do what, that. For money? Ah, now this is really interesting because there are pots of money. We think the government isn't using the money that is available effectively. They could be looking at SIL, they could be looking at the Regional Growth Fund, they could be looking at money that's going to let bring this together, use it strategically so we get not only housing, and I think we have to be careful not only mm -hmm. to talk about housing, we need to talk about building places, building communities that people want to live in. Minister? They need schools and they need jobs Minister? as well as houses. Um, I mean, I actually don't disagree with a lot of what Roberta is saying. Of course, you know, we are using all of those different pots of money to try and unlock sites, but I mean, I, I share her passion for garden cities and the way that they were developed. Um, uh, my, my case, in a sense, is very simple. Um, the last government, I believe, tried to force people to accept development, and it didn't work. They just didn't take it. You know, we're a very old democratic country and we just won't be told what to do. My job, therefore, is to try and persuade people, and it's partly yeah. to persuade them of the social justice problem, which is very real for all of their kids, but it's also to persuade them that new development can benefit their community, can benefit the people who exist, live there now, and that's what I'm trying do, to do. Do you buy into the structure, too, the idea of... We'll have a referendum. We'll have uh, you know local people will be brought on board. That, well, that's the uh, way to channel. I, I, I've got no problem with that in principle. Uh, uh, it, it's going to split communities. Um, uh, it's, it's the real problem here: the landowners. The landowners are the people who get the huge profits out of this. Uh, the idea that you somehow um, uh, produce some local harmony by these by these serious. I mean, Nick's bribing people to have housing estates and bribing them to have wind turbines. And, and the money involved in this is very considerable. Uh, quite why they don't give it all to the community, I don't know, but that's another question. The, the, the issue is where do you want to have this development take place? Britain is a very low density country. Most of our cities are very low. The houses like we're looking at here. Um, most of Europe, they've got flats. If you have a housing crisis, you build high density. You build high density where you've got roads, where you've got facilities in, exist in existence mm. already. You don't go and put them in a few... We do have to be this, very this, careful this, about this. Me this meadow yeah. development Th those is, of is us, just crazy. Those of us, and I don't know about everybody else, but those of us who have more than two homes, I have two homes, one I own on a huge mortgage, one that the taxpayer, thankfully, rents for me in my constituency. So I I know has at least two homes because I've been to two of them. I think those of us who have two homes or more need to be very careful about telling people that they yeah. should go and well, live on the top floor of a flat when they're trying to bring up well, two I was kids. Well, going to bring in John on when that. actually I mean, people it, want to house with a garden. You know, you're originally from New Zealand, I think. Do you, I I mean, do, do you see a cultural difference in this country when you come here? I mean, we don't want to live in flats, perhaps, and we don't. We, certainly, people do want to own their own homes and feel priced out of the housing market. There's a, a very strong preference for home ownership, as there is in other countries like New Zealand, definitely the case. There is an opposition to development of all kinds, and housing in particular, because it's the most common form of development, which, as a, an Antipodean, I do find puzzling. But I think the, the benefit of what Nick's talking about is that you're addressing some of the issues that worry people. For example, if someone here, if, people, if the local people hear that there's going to be a new housing development in the area, another 50 houses or whatever, the first things that they'll begin to think about are congestion on the roads. If you live where I live, you've already got yeah. congestion. The idea of more housing. If this can relieve that congestion mm -hmm. by funding a roundabout or a road widening or something, that, that, that has value. Mm -hmm. If it's just a bung that goes on um, unnecessary things, I'd be really quite concerned uh, about that. Minister, isn't this quite small beer, though? I mean, the part of the housing crisis is more and more people rent. Perhaps we've just unfortunately got to get used to that. And this British idea that we're going to own our own homes, perhaps for, uh, there is a generation that's going to find it incredibly difficult. And even though you may do things around the edges, as Roberta suggested, suggested it's not going to work for most people. Well, I'm, I'm not willing to accept that. I mean, in the 19th century, home ownership was a privilege. 
It was the exclusive preserve of people with money or rich parents. Now, we can either head back to that, and that's where we're heading. You know, home ownership sank by five percentage points in the last decade in England. We can either go back there, or we can recognise that we have a huge amount of undeveloped land that isn't special. All of the special land, 40% of it is protected by various right. designations. What is it, what is it, a huge what is it in Germany? Un- what's it in Germany? What's the house, what's the German home ownership? Owner occupation is quite low in Germany. It's very low. But it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural the problem thing. is in cities. The problem of housing well, in this country is in cities. Again, how many homes do you own? Can I finish? This is how many homes do you own? This is not about one individual. I'm paying for your houses. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, yeah, the but, the, but, the know, issue here is city housing. There's a shortage of housing in cities. Housing in cities is very badly managed at the moment. People don't occupy enough of the houses. The government's doing the right thing to try and encourage them to get rid of surplus bedrooms. But but this business about trying to get people to build on meadows is a total distraction from what this is really about. It's about planning cities properly for people to live in. Okay, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Thanks very much.